everyone, and welcome again to another Legacy video. Hey, it's Joe from This Week of Legacy at MTG Goldfish, and we're going to be uh, playing something really unique this week. Uh, last week, we kind of threw out some food chain goblins. Uh, that was super fun. Uh, but this week's deck is just, uh, there are no words for this deck, honestly. Uh, it's it's really, really stellar. It's very interesting. Um, and it's also simultaneously like the coolest and most frustrating thing I've ever played in my life. So uh, prepare for uh, a lot of interestingness to occur in this, this league for sure. Um, just, uh, yeah, there's lots of stuff that's going on here. Uh, before we get started, I want to thank everybody for continuing to watch the videos. Please make sure you guys are liking, subscribing, all that fun stuff. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, also, um, you know, be sure to check out their articles every, every Tuesday, uh, generally, um, for this week of legacy. I a little late this week cause of, uh, set review stuff. Uh, but you know, there is stuff going on. Uh, I am going to probably try and do some more vintage soon. Uh, I do want to record with goblins on that front, but, uh, there's also a couple other things I want to do with vintage at this point. Um, so hopefully the wind trader situation has gone down a little bit and maybe I can get back to putting out some vintage content as well. Uh, I do want to do some popper stuff as well. Um, so, but, uh, before we get started on talking about this deck, I want to thank uh, card hoarder, especially for providing me with a free rental account so that I can put out this kind of content. Uh, I absolutely have enjoyed doing this, uh, and it's been a lot of fun. So, uh, thank you guys for, uh, continuing to watch. Now let's talk about cosmic intervention. Uh, this deck comes to us from by way of Peter White uh, at POW 22 MTG. Uh, it's something that he posted, and uh, another uh, fellow player, uh, Kellen Pastor, uh, posted a uh, 4 1 uh, with this, and it really uh, got my interest. So, um, Cosmic Intervention is a card from the Kamigawa. Or not come and go at the Kaldheim Commander sets, uh, and it's basically it has foretell, uh, and it says uh, if a permanent you control would be put into a graveyard from the battlefield this turn, you exile it instead, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control to bidding you the next end step. Now, what's really wild about this card is that there's a couple things you can do with this. Uh, so first of all, cracking fetch lands is kind of super goofy with this card. Uh, activating Wasteland is super goofy with this card. Uh, cracking Bobbles is really goofy with this card. So what happens is if you cast this during your main phase and you crack a couple Bobbles or you crack Fetch Land and, you know, stuff like that, those cards will come back on your end step. Immediately on your end step, those cards are still subject to Cosmic Intervention's replacement effect. So if at that point in time you activate them again, they will get exiled and they will come back on your opponent's end step. Uh, it's a really wild thing to, to, to consider. Basically, it lets you get like up to three activations of something, uh, which is really strong when you're cracking uh, bobbles. Uh, so, you know, if you have two bobbles in play, you're drawing four cards on your opponent's next upkeep with this, uh, which is really, really, really strong. Uh, so that, that part alone is, is kind of fun. Uh, obviously, if you're cracking fetch lands, uh, you are getting, you know, two fetches that turn and another fetch on your opponent's turn. Wasteland, you're getting triple activations as your wasteland, that sort of thing. There's also a really fun trick you can do with Solitude, where if you exile Solitude, uh, exile a uh, white card to evoke Solitude, it dies, goes into exile, comes back on your end step. You can get two triggers off of Solitude to exile something. So really, really, really super cool. This deck also plays, uh, you know, Chalice of the Void. We also have uh, Brought Back, which is uh, kind of an interesting card. So it's a uh, white, white for choose up to tar two target permanent cards in your graveyard that were put there from the battlefield this turn. Return to, to the battlefield tapped. You can use this on fetch lands. You can use this on bobbles. Uh, you can use it on if, say, like one of your planeswalkers dies. You can use it on one of your planeswalkers, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, we also have Planeswalkers. Uh, we have Gideon of the Trials. We have the Wandering Emperor, which is incredibly strong. A uh, very, very strong card. Uh, we have Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. We have Elspeth, Sun's Champion. 
Uh, and then, of course, like to fill out some slots here, we've got, uh, you know, four copies of Solitude because it works really well with Cosmic Intervention. It works really well with Brought Back, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, March of Otherworldly Light is another way of exiling uh, permanents, uh, uh, at least artifact creatures or enchantments. Uh, and then we have a Shurikai Genesis engine as kind of a draw engine. And, uh, of course, like, you know, with some stuff like uh, Mox Diamond, Chrome Mox, uh, Council's Judgment, uh, that sort of thing. So uh, it's a really interesting deck. Um, I've had a lot of, uh, I've been playing it for a little bit, just trying to practice with it. And I've had a lot of games where uh, it tends to flood out pretty hard, uh, which is weird because, you know, it's a 21 land deck. You think you shouldn't flood out too hard, but it feels like it does. There's a lot of, a lot of mana in the deck uh, with all the Mox Diamonds and Chrome Moxes and all that stuff. Uh, so um, I don't know if uh, there's a, a version out there of this where we could cut Chalice and play Brainstorm instead. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, Chalice has been really good uh, when I've played it, uh, which is weird because people say Chalice is not very good right now, but there's so many nonsense like slash combo slash uh, Chalice soft decks and leagues that it seems fine for leagues to play Chalice uh, simply because you're going to run into more situations where Chalice is more necessary. Um, Sideboard-wise, we've got uh, some interesting cards. Uh, so one thing I should mention is that because we have uh, four Solitude in the main and no other actual creatures, we do get to play Kahira, the Orphan Guard, as our companion in this deck. Uh, so Kahira says that each creature in your deck has to be a cat, elemental, nightmare, dinosaur, or beast. Uh, and it gives everything that is one of those cards, uh, one of those creature types, uh, plus one, plus one, and vigilance. Uh, and it has vigilance itself, so of course, you know, it's going to make your solitudes four threes. Uh, this is really good with the Wandering Emperor. When the Wandering Emperor gives something first strike, that means they have first strike and vigilance. Uh, that's very strong. Uh, so the... Kahira does have the ability to get shut off in post-board games uh, simply because uh, we have a couple creatures like Fairy Macabre and um, Lavinia Azorius Renegade to board in in certain matchups. Uh, we have Mystical Dispute, Flusterstorm, Echoing Truth. Hallowed Moonlight is kind of a cute card uh, because it kind of beats uh, things like uh, Field of the Dead. Uh, it also beats... Uh, so say like your opponent is on eight mulch, which is a pretty reasonable uh, deck right now. Uh, you're you can uh, and they go to mana bond on their turn. You could hollowed moonlight and they would exile any of the zombies because it doesn't specify non token. Uh, it can exile merit lage uh, if merit lage would enter the battlefield, uh, that sort of thing. So uh, seal of cleansing for destroying artifacts and enchantments. Uh, pretty pretty simple state uh, sideboard. Uh, Supreme verdict. Uh, this deck is playing a lot of Planeswalkers and not so many creatures, so Supreme Verdict is really good at mopping up aggressive strategies. Uh, and then just, you're just winning off of your Planeswalkers uh, gaining value, especially if like you can stick like Elsbeth uh, to where Elsbeth can just uh, eventually create enough creatures to win the game, and you don't care that they die because she can just create more. So... Uh, or uh, Shorakai uh, can also be a legitimate win condition if you get to a point where you could crew it and hit them for eight a turn. So, uh, but this deck is cool. Uh, it's it's unique for sure. So uh, we're looking forward to seeing what we'd happens in a league with this. And uh, we're gonna go over to match one shortly. So thank you guys for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys shortly with match one. Hello everyone, and welcome to match one of Cosmic Intervention Control. Uh, so we are not on the play. We're going to choose our companion here. Um, this hand is strange. And I'm not sure if I keep it. It's got a lot of lands in it. Uh, and it has bobbles. March of Otherworldly Light is removal. So Solitude is removal. So if they're on, like, Delver, we have a way to, uh, actually interact with them. Uh, but it's got a lot of basic lands. Uh, so, I don't know, we're on the draw, I like my hands to do something with this deck, I, it seems like it, it, the mulligans are so weird with this, and I, I'm not sure what to do, um, probably get a mulligan, and that was worse, so, we're gonna mulligan to five, 
and I guess we have to keep this. Uh, I'm going to bend this and I guess we'll bend this solitude. Feels like we should have just kept that opening hand versus Delver. Open up Honder. The nice thing is we do have the opportunity to actually draw some cards here. Let's see what they got. Uh, bolt. Yeah, see, they have a wasteland, so. Cast Monarch Starland. Problem with casting Gideon is that Gideon doesn't do anything because uh, he just gets bolted in response uh, to activating, so. Coming in at th Gideon coming in at three. Uh, let's let's try and chalice them on one. They have to they have to do something about this. Oh, they're just gonna <laughs> they're just gonna pull me. Okay. I'm just gonna sp spin their pyroblasts. That seems f fair. Ah, and it's because we're going to try for a, a Murktide Regent. That's that's fair. So I think... There's Solitudum. Try to stick a Gideon. Yeah, days is fine. Okay. I kind of expected that. Um, we will put Kahira in my hand. We know that they had this bolt. Iteration. Let's see what they're going to gonna bend bobble wasteland 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 uh oh let's Let's not put that into a daze. If they've got it. Let's, let's make sure that we... Do respect. Yeah, another Murktide Regent. 6-6 six, six Murktide. That Murktide. Uh, let's see if they have a daze. Okay. It was fine for them to cast that on a chalice. They need iteration to, to find them something to win the game. So... All right, let's stick Shorkai. Let's 
that their fourth iteration? Third iteration. Yeah. Force of Will. Exiling Force of Will to expressive iteration. All right, let's... See what they got going on. Okay, steam vents. We have an answer for a third Merc Tide if they manage to jam a third Merc Tide. Okay, they're just conceding to that. Sure. So, yeah, so we just got to kind of see what the deck... We didn't get to see any of the Cosmic Intervention stuff, but we got to see some of the prison aspect of the deck is that we're really good with Chalice on uh, in this deck. And so... Uh, that's really strong. Uh, the problem is, is like sideboard against this. Like we want, especially since we're on the draw, we don't want um, chalice on the draw, and they're more than likely to bring in artifact destruction. So uh, we want stuff that stops them from having their cards uh, or exile stuff. Uh, even Shurikai is kind of a a, a awkward card against them. Um, I want Supreme Verdict. And I want Mystical Dispute and like Echoing Truce. They do play Pyroblast, uh, so that's awkward. Um, so maybe we might want like Fluster Storms instead, uh, to where we could stop them from uh, protecting a threat. But Supreme Verdict is going to be pretty good because uh, they can't counter that. Uh, this is okay. This is actually just fine. Uh, the Delver of Secrets. The question becomes, do we hang out and hold on to this solitude? Um... For when we foretell, like, let me hang out, hold on to the solitude, and see if they flip their. Okay, they didn't flip their delvers, so that's fine. Channeler is scary, but again, like, we have this. Or Fortella. Uh, they're gonna try and bolt, surveil. Yeah, the days is obnoxious. But we have a solitude in hand. Try and jam cosmic intervention. Let's see what they've got in their hand. We have a Merc Tide in hand. All right, let's bobble them again. Fetch again. I draw double sol or double solitude. Yeah, we're gonna we can 
safely take some damage here. You're gonna try and like daze me. A hard cast daze so that they can. Yeah, we'll pay for the daze. Let's wasteland them. Another channeler. Yeah. Okay. So cool. We got we get match one on the back of solitudes and all that fun stuff. Uh, Source of Plowshares is just obviously going to be really good against this deck that wants to play creatures. Uh, and we have Mystical Dispute for uh, a bra uh, Murktide if a Murktide could come down. Uh, so that's that's fun. Uh, we did get to see uh, Cosmic Intervention actually do something in this game. So that was kind of super fun to see. Uh, get to see like Cosmic Intervention do the thing where you get like to draw like two or three cards, plus have like a Wasteland up, and plus also have like double fetches, triple fetches. Uh, and you know, so over the course of like that start turn, we drew three cards off of a single bobble and that's really strong so imagine that when you have more than one bobble and it gets even better so deck is super cool uh we're starting off strong uh we'll see if we can keep it up uh but we'll have a match two shortly okay so we are here on match two with cosmic control and uh, we are on the draw waiting to see what our opponent's going to do with being able to play first and all that fun stuff. Choosing to play first, let's pick our companion, Mr. Kahira. The, well, I think it's a she. They also revealed a companion. They revealed Yorion, so they are more than likely on Deaths and Taxes. Um, so this seems fine, actually, versus Deaths and Taxes. We get a lot of uh, things that do some stuff, draw some cards. Uh, March of Otherworldly Light to deal with, a, with stuff. Prismatic Vista, so probably not a dozen taxes. Uh, gonna guess some form of Esper Vial. of some sort, or some sort of big Yorion deck, uh, which is like blue Yorion. Probably Yorion Zenith. Loam. Life from the loam. I'm just play planes. Let's see what you got. You have an endurance. See if your your option here is stick endurance and hope that wins you the game. A coaddle, okay, sure. I'm content with hanging out and.
wasteland here is genuinely awful. I play so many cards. Yeah, I don't think endurance is any good here. Like, thanks for putting my my stuff back on the bottom. Oh, let's see if they've got a force force effect in hand. Let's train Wandering Emperor. Um, just straight force negation. That's cute. Yeah, sure. Do 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 Like Wasteland is bad because they have uh loam. We just wanna like, focus on making land drops. And casting solitudes. Let's see what we got going on up top. Timeless Dragon. Timeless Dragon is a cute, cute card. You get to see them cycle that Timeless Dragon. Well, this is just some sort of big Yorion deck that... keep drawing wastelands for that it's kind of obnoxious yeah you have your well, I'll try and flash in a solitude and Take one. Yeah, Yorion going into hand. Let's see if they've got a See if they've got a force. No force. Yorion is okay here because I can um, solitude it. Like. If they cast Yorion, like, it has to be, it gets solituded. Bond, it grows. I'm just trying to draw so many cards. Yorion's fine. They're going to draw two cards.
the value train. Can't stop that value train. They could have just blocked. It didn't really matter. They're seeing so much of their deck, though. It's wild. Prismatic ending on Gideon. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is a thing that can happen here, so. That's. That's gorgeous. Uh, let's try and stick Shork high. They have a counter spell for Sorakai, I'm sure. Gotta have a force of negation for it. Snapcaster Mage. Ah, target brainstorm. We gotta try and find a counter spell for it. Which means they didn't have one, so they're trying to dig for one. Of course they found one, sure. Oh, I should have put Kahira in my hand. This is me forgetting that I have uh, a, a companion in this deck. <laughs> Literally just don't beat... Uh, uh arrow. Yeah, they get to they get to arrow. They have to solitude their arrow. And they left the Timeless Dragons in their yard, so. <laughs> yeah, make me think about it. I'm not blocking that. Oh, Solitude, their arrow. It feels bad to have to do that, but it's what you gotta do. Let's put Kahira in my hand. I feel like the longer this game goes on, the longer I'm losing because they just have so much more velocity and more cards. And they can just uh, draw uh, out of all this by just drawing all their cantrips. So... It stinks, but yeah, this is like the rough. These are rough matchups. These kind of like ducks were like this would have been like great for for chalice, but then they have prismatic ending. So uh, Teferi stinks. This thing I've learned is Teferi is kind of awful 
to play against uh, with this deck. Uh, and it's simply because uh, this deck doesn't have a good way of dealing with Teferi. Uh, cosmic Intervention is a card. I can't can't do the trick of casting Cosmic Intervention mid combat because it's a fairy. Um, Like, Kahira seems okay, but she probably gets plowed or prismatic in, I don't know. I don't know what the right, I'll try for Kahira. I mean, if they have plows, like, oh, uh, Snapcaster Rage, Prismatic Ending, sure. Yeah, I, I'm not not beating this. Uh, this is not a, a pleasant. Uh, not mystical Dispute. And Supreme Verdict seems okay. Like I said, the problem is beating to fairy and all that stuff. And hmm. brought back feels weak. Um weak enough to cut to two. Chalice actually feels weak in this matchup simply because uh, of stuff like Teferi, stuff like Prismatic Ending, that sort of thing. Uh, Fairy Macabre actually seems pretty reasonable here at get rid getting rid of um, some stuff. So actually, I think I, I just want to cut Chalices entirely. Uh, we lose Kahira here. But I think like having like a package with Flusterstorm uh, or even Echoing Truth. Sideboarding with this deck is so hard. Like honestly, like and I, I'm I'm not good at sideboarding. I'm gonna be the first to admit that. So maybe I'm misboarding here. I don't know. But uh, I don't think I want chalices against the deck that plays Prismatic Ending into Fairy and all that fun stuff. So uh what does his hand even do? Like, that's the problem. Uh, but it has a lot of mana in it, so... I guess? Like, that's the other thing. It's like... The... fact that we didn't reveal Kahira probably tips him off that I brought in something that doesn't... That, yeah, I don't know. Let's see if we get any value out of this mystical dispute uh, long term. There is cosmic intervention. We'll foretell cosmic intervention. Quaddle. Like, I have a lot of respect for these Yorion piles because they um, 
they draw they they put so many cards in their decks that do the same thing uh it's very redundant uh so i'm guessing we're seeing uro here or either uro or teferi so yeah see teferi sucks it's just an absolutely obnoxious card for this deck uh you just don't beat Oh, okay, they're choosing to... Ah, uh, yes, he's, uh, they get to pitch their Uro. Uh, that's, that's absolutely adorable. What are the odds that they have a Force of Will in hand, I guess, is the question here. Uh, so, let's go. Let's see. Let's see if they got a Force. No. Okay, let's go to work. What do they have in hand? A wasteland. Oh, they have a waste. They have wastelands in hand. Well, crap. Guess I'm fetching some basic planes. I'm gonna make them have to have it. And we're going to draw four cards. Like, I could play the Wasteland, I guess. Yeah, Quaddle. Let's draw even more cards. See what we got going on up upstairs. They got an arrow in hand. Let's try and counsel's judgment this to fairy. Alright, let's do some business. We drew a million cards. Let's do some business. Yeah, they got this. Oh, ponder. Ponder, 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 ponder. Now they know what we're up, what we're doing, so they've got. Let's see if they have. An answer for Wandering Emperor. No. Ah, yes. Got there in a game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, super cute. Uh, so, so all right. So, we got there just uh, on the back of being able to uh, draw, like, a million cards. We drew, what, six cards off of two bobbles. So, uh, that's really, really absurd. I think I want Fluster Storms, even though they're playing Wasteland. Like, I still think I want these cards that stop. Let's well, see. The problem is, okay. So the problem is, we boarded in reactive cards, uh, and they have to ferry. So, uh, it, are the reactive cards actually any good? Because they have to ferry. Uh, it's awkward. So it's it's a really awkward position position because they play to ferry. And then all of a sudden, your reactive cards are sitting in your hand doing nothing like that Mystical Dispute did until we got rid of the Teferi. So, uh, is that op good or not? Like, I think we want... 
It's odd. Yeah, it's, it's super awkward. Like, um, Lavinia seems meh because Lavinia is more for decks that aren't fair. Like, that's that's awkward. Uh, Hallowed Moonlight is also not very good. Seal of Cleansing is also not very good. Um, I don't really like the brought backs here. We could board in Kahira. It seems odd to do that, do that, but we're not playing. Like, I just don't like Chalice, especially on the draw. Um, I think we could board in one Fluster Storm. Uh, in case we have to fight over Teferi. Like, if we Mystical Dispute and they have uh, a counterspell for the Mystical Dispute, we could Fluster Storm uh, if they have that. Uh, we just we just drew a lot of cards in that game, uh, and that was what made that game uh, so interesting. Uh, is just drawing so many cards off of uh, the bobbles. Okay, I mean, I think. I don't know if this is reasonable or not. Uh, like, the issue with this hand is it doesn't do much. It has solitude. It has stuff. It doesn't have any card draw action. I'm why I'm like, but it has counselless judgment and it has solitude. Uh, I guess like. I mean, yeah, we have Fluster Storm. <laughs> Woo. -hoo. They're real conscious of Wasteland. This seems like as good a target as any to use a Fluster Storm on. Honestly. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get a better choice of something to use a Fluster Storm on to prevent them from having more, more lands. No, <laughs> they just had another life from them. Okay. Super funny. Eh. Let's get some card draw up in here and see what they've got going on. We get to see two of the lands in their hands. They're real conscious about Wasteland. Burrow. I think we have to try... And probably Solitude the Uro. Just because it, it doesn't make sense to let Uro stick. Oh, uh, we gotta get we gotta get rid of that card. It stinks to have to Let's bobble them and see what they got going on. We oh, so we know about that. Uh, 
I got a brainstorm in hand. Yeah, real real conscious about uh about uh, about wasteland here, like super conscious. The problem is, is we're not drawing enough lands to do much here. Sure. And we're 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 kind of in a bad position if they decide to just start loaming and looping wasteland, uh, which means we need a. That is not a good card to draw right now. Uh, if they just decide to loam and loop wasteland. Yeah, so they could just do that. We can just we're just dead to them wasting us out of the game. Yeah, that's that's awkward. Okay. We are not winning a game where we're just, like, losing to Loam. Okay. Yeah. Uh, cool. All right. Well, hey, we got one game there. Uh, I'm just the way it ended up, like, we just kind of drew poorly uh, in that last game. Uh, and, yeah, we probably should have fetched one of those to be on, on planes. But, you know, it, six out doesn't want to the other. So, uh, all right. Let's go over to match three here shortly. Okay, so we are here for match three. Uh, our opponent did a little bit of a uh, wait, wait, wait uh, on us. So uh, just uh, kind of started things right now uh, with the recording. Uh, I'm going to mulligan this hand. It's just not good. Um, this hand is okay enough but the chrome moxes make it awkward so the really awkward thing about chrome mox in this deck uh when you're considering cards like shurikai is that chrome mox does can't exile shurikai because it's an artifact uh and that makes it real obnoxious so uh, let's see here All right, so they played a swamp, and they're passing turn. Uh, I guess we just like play this Chrome Mox, exile this Council's Judgment. I'm not sure really what they're doing here. Not sure what's going on yet. Baleful Strix. So they could be on Grixis or they could be on some sort of blue black deck. Probably Grixis. Are we going to see that? Yeah. Hidetsuku consumes all. That's obnoxious, to say the least. Um, I have a feeling I have to respond to this. Uh, I guess I just pitched this Elsbeth because it's never getting cast. But I feel like I pitched this Shurikai because it's kind of obnoxious. Um, did 
They have a counter spell for okay, they don't. So yeah, I, I'm losing my my Chromox here, which is awkward to say the least. And uh we're just gonna draw nothing? I I don't The other card that this deck has a hard time with, uh, which is something that these decks tend to run, is Narset. Uh, counterbalance. Sure. I haven't seen a counterbalance in literally forever. Um, is the fact that uh, there are cards like uh, Days Undoing Narset in the format that are really difficult to play around. Uh, and even Narset in general is rough. Yeah, so, so Narset is probably going to be uh, lights out for us if they manage. They didn't even like hit a hit a card. Wow, that's weird. So we have a chance to draw like a good amount of. It just doesn't do anything. So this is the other problem with this deck is that occasionally you just draw, you either draw too many lands or you draw none of your lands, uh, and you put yourself in a position where you're just like dead. Uh, Jace is rough here. Uh, that's super rough, and uh, we just aren't having an ability to do much here about it. Um, the deck doesn't have good ways of beating. Um, opposing Planeswalkers and I'm just going to concede because I'm a little tilted uh, because of the fact that we had to um, that we lost uh, to somebody who timed us out uh, but you know whatever uh, okay so they don't so they don't play anything that impacts their graveyard um, Chalice seems real bad here simply because they can um, they can uh, do the Hidetsugu consumes all thing um, Supreme Verdict just seems meh uh, thankfully they're not playing Teferi so some reactive spells uh, make sense but Flusterstorm also doesn't deal with um, with uh, the the enchantments, or they don't deal with planeswalkers. I feel like I want to shave a mox diamond because I don't like it. Uh, just side in a bunch of blue cards that atta uh, attack their their stack stuff, I guess. All right, so seven, no lands, go. Yeah, no. Uh, I also just don't like Chrome Mox here. Uh, it feels really awkward. Uh, I also don't like Mox Diamond here. Uh, again, it feels very awkward. Uh, I guess we'll... Try and o on, go on the attack of... I don't know. Uh, I don't know if there was a good plan to board against this deck or a bad plan. Uh, there isn't much we can do. Uh, other than just kind of hang out and hope for the best. I was just going to thought sees me. Okay, sure. I take the short guy. I kind of want this Gideon to stick, but I also don't want them to have mana. Let's do it under upkeep. Yeah, we force them have to have to brainstorm here.
this forces a brainstorm and it maybe puts them in a position where they don't hit a fetch land. I don't know. And an island. Island Ponder is probably okay. Just uh, hang out. And try and maybe stick a Gideon. Just gonna thought sees me again. <laughs> sure. Uh, love it. Love just. Okay. Gonna hang out and just do a lot of nothing. Not sure what's going on here. <laughs> All right, so the joke is that nobody plays him to Turok anymore. Here's somebody playing him to Turok, and it's real obnoxious. Uh, and I hate it. Uh, I haven't played against a him deck in literally forever, and I'm thoroughly annoyed. Uh, people, please stop playing him to Turok. This card is not good. I'm gonna tell you right now. Uh, him is him is not a good magic card anymore. In 2022, sure, you got a Narset. It's a good card when your opponent is trying to resolve Narset. Red Elemental Blast. Try to brought back my my fetch. <laughs> All right. The days in hand. I mean, I think at a day's undoing, like, we're just dead. Uh, and it's not even close. And that's what I hate about this. Like, it's day's undoing is, is just such a... ridiculous magic card. Just gonna hold on. Yeah, hole breacher, sure. Lay the day's undoing down on me. Let the let the pain begin. Hole breacher is even worse because it, it hurts on the uh, aspect of that I can't use bobbles. Yeah, hey, that's a goo. And there's a bobble, and I'm just dead. Yeah, I. <laughs> Can't do anything about this. So, yeah. Uh, quick O2 to Grixis Control. Uh, my only thought here is stop playing him to Turok, people. Uh, just stop, please. <laughs>
<laughs> just don't don't care for it. Don't care for it. All right. Uh, so let's move over to match four. Uh, hopefully we can uh, squeak through a three two. Um, but yeah, matchups like that. Oof. Uh, just Narset in general is just really difficult to deal with. Uh, Narset and Teferi are like the two big cards that I've found in my practice that dealing with those cards is really difficult. And I'm not sure what a good way of doing getting rid of that is uh, or dealing with that is offhand um, other than splashing it with their color and playing blasts. I don't know. Yeah. So anyways, uh, over to match, th match four. Sorry. Okay. So here we are with round four of Cosmic Control. And we are on the play. So we get to pick our companion first. Isn't that something? Uh, I don't like this hand, though, uh, so that's fun. Uh, this hand seems really awkward. Uh, like, it draws a lot of cards first, but it doesn't do anything else. Uh, and we don't have a land, uh, or, yeah. I'm just going to mulligan this. Um, I guess, like, we get to draw two cards, and then we get to see if, uh, we have Solitude plus uh, Chal possibly Chalice on turn. Turn one, or turn two. Chandra. Chandra. I don't think this Chalice is going to do any good. Oh, actually, it's kind of funny. So, they're going to Chalice on zero. We need to march over the otherworldly light, this Chalice. Okay, I guess we get to do, like, brought back shenanigans. Guess we don't get to do brought back shenanigans. That's awkward. Uh, okay. Yeah, sure. You can have that chalice on zero. Can have that Trinisphere as well. We're going to jam this Solitude into something. The thing about this is that you have to have something that, that actually interacts with what I'm doing. Like you're just assuming. Ugh. Chandra Heart of Fire. XL. Oh, so we're just going to do that. Okay. That plus ones? Holy cow. Let's get in there for for solitude value. Because even if they plus it, uh... oh, that's just absolutely adorable. Let's just vote for the Chandra. We knew that that was there. Uh, so yeah, we're in the weird deck of Chandra-ish, Blood Sun, blah, blah, blah. I'm sure another Chandra. I foresee our solitude getting killed, sure. Um, 
sure. Move a land that doesn't do anything. Chandra, Torch of Defiance, Ensnaring Bridge. They get to play, like, all of these cards. They can play all of these cards. Yeah, sure. All right. Yep. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Lavinia seems okay here. So does Seal of Cleansing. So does Echoing Truth. Chalice is awful in this matchup. Brought back is probably not okay either. Um, Mystical Speed's no good. Uh, yeah, I would like to be on the play. This is... Um, not pleasant. Well, actually, this is okay. No, yeah, this is like a turn one foretell of and if we don't get like Blood Moon or Blood Sun, we can just like blow up all their lands. So... Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. We have to draw another land for that to happen, I, I should say. Chrome Mox. Even getting Blood Moon is, I think, just fine because then we just get to draw like four cards. Oh, and Snary Bridge. Okay, yeah. This is totally okay. see what's in their hand you see what's in their hand we're just gonna see two chrome boxes is that all they have in their hand is chrome box <laughs> all right I would like to yield to my my card draw triggers here I see a lot of Chrome Moxes. I don't know if that's all they've got, but. Oh, okay. Chandra Heart of Fire. That may be the only Chrome Mox they've got. I don't, I don't know. We'll see. About to get real ridiculous up in here, though. Uh, we are about to draw literally just a billion cards Chandra Torch Defiance Chromox 
Do a drawing bloods on chrome box. Gonna draw some brought backs. We're just gonna draw just a million cards. This blood sun is totally fine at this point. We could also we could get rid of the blood sun if we really wanted to. So much card draw. <laughs> so the way we get... Oh, oh God. <laughs> All right. So the way we get rid of the Blood Sun here is that we March of Otherworldly Light, uh, pitching probably both brought backs because this card's doing us nothing in this matchup. Uh, so then we just... Go to town. Foretell this. Just stick out like like a sore thumb. Like we just just <laughs> now have the ability to like draw like eight cards off of bobbles. All right, what are they putting underneath this? They put Chandra Torch of Defiance underneath. Oh, Karn of the Great Creator is an uh, obnoxious magic card. Oh, that, well, that's, that's... That's totally obnoxious. <laughs> Just gonna... Uh... Yeah, sure. I'll cast these these baubles. And we will probably Do I pitch a they're drawing a Blood Sun for turn. Oh, I didn't want to discard that. Well, that's fine. Drawing the Blood Sun is not good, though, because I can... Uh, I can What do they get here? Coding. Yeah. Well, that's that's fine. Yeah, that's actually just totally fine. You ought to see something spicy. This Echoing Truth is now just obnoxiously good. I 
March of Otherworldly Light. They're in Snaring Bridge. I just put three Chrome Moxes in their hands. Karn is dead as a doorknob. Yeah, sure. Using Karn to blow up my my Tundra. Pretty adorable. I know at least three of those cards in your hand are Blood Suns. Uh, or or uh, three of those cards in your hand are Chrome Moxes. So uh, Karn is definitely long for this world here. So we get rid of Karn. We turn back on our baubles. <laughs> okay, sure. I should have uh, cast uh, Cos Cosmic Intervention uh, there, but I don't think it mattered. Uh, so. Uh, super cool. Uh, fun, 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 fun. Uh, that was that was a game. You know, echoing truth on uh, on a on three chrome boxes <laughs> is solid. Like that is that is a solid thing to have happen. Like, mm. uh, I don't like this hand because it's weak to chalice uh, at all, and and I think. I don't like that idea of being that weak to Chalice. Um, this is slightly weak to Chalice, but at the same time, it's got March. Because that's what I expect. I expect they're going to Chalice on zero. But we've got March. Let's see what they got going on upstairs. Well, they got a Karn in hand. And they have the ability to cast it, so that's obnoxious. Uh, we just drew a bunch of lands. So. Yeah, they cast Karn. Thank you. I don't. I don't know why you would downtick Karn here unless you have another Soul Land in hand. Like, I have to respect the fact that they should. They might not have another Soul Land. Yeah, Shatter Skull Smashing. Sure. Karn is certainly problematic, though. Um, this keeps them from casting Chrome Mox. Because Chromox uh, is free and they can't cast it without. Sure, we're going to get liquid metal coating. So now we just have to like. Beat through their Karn, which is going to be difficult with just a two, two, two. That's going to be rough. 
But this just depends on them not get, getting any other creatures or any other uh, threats on board. Now, they can't cast... Um, they couldn't, like, Ancient Tomb cast uh, Chandra because it doesn't work. Trinity is fine. Oh. <laughs> Putting your... Your Trinisphere. Sure. This is a game. This is this is certainly a game. Uh, I appreciate how much of a game this is. Uh, If they try to do the thing, we get a cosmic intervention, a response, uh, and save the land. Trinosphere. So many Trinospheres. Oh. Damn it. I didn't even, I didn't do the thing. Uh, We didn't do the thing. We have to do the thing now. Forgot. Turner Sphere makes it cost three. We have to float mana in response. Punt! Super punt. Cast Cosmic Intervention. interesting concept here. Everything revolves around this Karn right now. Uh, and that's, that's super awkward. And the only reason we're losing anything here is because we're losing to this Karn. Uh, and that's... It's incredibly awkward. The correct play there was they, they should have moved phases. See if they figure that out here. Yeah, okay. They figured it out. They figured out how to do it. We're real stuck here. And if they resolve any other threat, I think we're dead. Bridge is not that threat.
And I, just, I wonder how long they're going to be able to keep this up. Yep. They figured out how to make, how to stop it. I mean, if you resolve any other planeswalker. Okay. I'm officially dead to the prison deck. Okay, cool. All right, well, I guess let's move on to the last match and uh, see what happens. Okay, so we are here for the last round of Cosmic Intervention Control. And uh, we had a, a, a cruddy, cruddy round last round uh, with uh, this... Uh, red prison strategy deck and uh that was not so much fun uh but hey we're back again uh this is okay kind of leaves us somewhat soft to wasteland uh but it has it doesn't have a chalice a chance of casting a chalice on turn one uh unless we draw like a a mox or something like that if we draw a mox this is like so much better uh uh, chalice on the draw okay is also kind of meh but we have a chance to do some stuff here oh represent plow oh okay so we get to force them to do something about this. Coaddle. So they're playing uh, Prismatic Ending or Teferi and they just don't have an answer to it, I guess. I don't Cancel. We would like to foretell this. We are gonna try and get some card draw going. Here, I'm expecting them to play Uro. Oh, nope, to Fairy. Okay. A prismatic ending. Yeah, I'm probably going to be hitting my chalice. So we've played against two Teferi decks, and Teferi is awful to play against. Uh, yeah. Of course, they have a prismatic ending on top, so it doesn't really matter what we do. We try and jam this chalice again and make them answer it. The question is, do we jam the ant jam the card that they have to i guess we jam make sure that they don't have prismatic ending they probably have a counter spell for this i would assume that they have a counter spell for this i wish we had a wasteland in this scenario i wish this tundra was a wasteland could we just waste out there yeah sure Yet another uh, Narset plus, um, you know, Teferi deck that is just legitimately difficult to beat. And they can...
see if they have something for Gideon of the Trials. Force and Negation off the top. And they can cast their Prismatic Engine at instant speed, which means they can get rid of Gideon. Yada, yada, yada. Gideon's the, the threat. So, okay, so is Wandering Empire Emperor. Yeah. This combination of Narset and Teferi in this current metagame is not super pleasant to play against. And it's getting really kind of ridiculous. See if you have a counter spell. Let's see force and negation. Yeah. All right. So we just gotta like try and jam to fairy. To fairy doesn't do anything because I can't draw extra cards. Um. I'm a little uh. It's a little ridiculous uh playing against these these decks that just uh, stick to fairy stick Narset and ride that to victory and it's it's gotten so so insane uh, I, I just don't want these chalices at all even though I'm going to be on the play uh, because it doesn't do anything they just don't do anything against these decks um, so the adage of maybe playing against combo uh, didn't work here because this league was nothing but fair decks uh, in fact, uh, out of all the decks we played, uh, the unfairest deck we played against was uh, the Red Prison deck, uh, it felt like. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, it feels like uh, we're in a, stuck in a position where, every, you know, the, league, the leagues don't matter anymore. Like, it's just total, total randomness, and I think we're... Yeah, it just doesn't matter. Like, um, that was probably a keep, and I mulliganed it, and... This is probably awful. Like, there's no good way to beat to beat to fairy. Uh, it's just, it really, really, really stresses all of your removal. And it stresses everything you're, you're doing, so. It, it's just the nature of what we have to deal with in this current format, though, so. Uh, I, I have a feeling that's just the way it is. Uh, we have to deal with this. And just wasteland them. Yeah, I can get your quaddle on. What are you drawing? Caracas. Well, at least I know that doesn't do anything against this deck. Yep. Double, 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 double.
between Uro, like there's so many threats now that trying to play like this like cool kind of synergy kind of base deck feels weird. Uh, and again, I'm I'm not the best the best player here. I, I feel like I've probably made some mistakes. Um, and that's okay. Like that's how we learn. Uh, but I've also felt like I haven't been in a position where. It's brought back. Uh, let's see if they well, see if they care about brought back. They're forced brought back. Then I'm in an even weirder position in this game. I'm drawing back to basics here. I hate to get rid of Council Judgment. It gets rid of, like, the cards I care about, though. Burrow is certainly a card. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing. And let's probably be proceeding to scoop phase here if we don't draw anything good. Um. Yeah, that doesn't do anything because they have Caracas. Uh, we're not drawing anything good. All right, well, uh, so we ended up 1-4 uh, <laughs> in that league, uh, playing against several Teferi decks, uh, playing against Grixis Control. Uh, again, Narset, Narset, Narset uh, is not a pleasant uh, place for this deck to be, and it seems like those cards are everywhere. Uh, and I think it's probably accurate uh, that those cards are just everywhere. So I still think this deck is cool. Honestly, I think this deck is really sweet. It does a lot of cool stuff. Uh, I don't even know if, like, you know, doing the Chrome Mox there was probably cor probably not correct. They had the Prismatic Ending for it. Um, sure. Uh, I don't know. So, uh, yeah. I, I think uh, I probably made some mistakes with this deck. Uh, there's definitely a lot of mulliganing involved in this deck. It's not an easy deck to just pick up and play. Um, so, uh, big shout out to Powell 22 MTG though for creating this because I do love Cosmic Intervention. I think the card is really sweet, and I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, so uh, we'll see. Um, we might have another video out this week. Uh, we'll see. Um, I've got to kind of take a look and see what I've got on the docket to learn real quick. Um, I'm really sad and unfortunate. There's a deck I would love to learn how to love to play on Magic Online, uh, but that I just found out about uh, this week. And unfortunately, we can't play it on Magic Online because one of the cards in the deck doesn't exist on Magic Online, uh, and that is Creative Technique, uh, which uh, I'll pull up the deck list here so you guys can see it real quick. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, basically it's a, a Cloud Post deck that plays Creative Technique, uh, and Creative Technique is a uh, four and a red sorcery that has Demonstrate. Uh, with uh, shuffle your library and reveal cards from the top until you reveal it a non-land. And then you exile that card and put the rest on the bottom in a random order, and you may cast the exile card without paying its mana cost. Uh, so you get to like hit stuff like Maelstrom Wanderer and um, Apex Devastator and that sort of thing. So pretty sweet, but yeah, unfortunately, uh, Creative Technique does not exist on Magic Online, so we can't play that one. So we'll have to find something else. Uh, I'm sure I've got something else that we can probably try out. I've got a uh, Enchantress... Uh, Loam deck. Uh, I've got Shorakai Stoneblade that look kind of fun. Um, 
you know, sort of things. So we'll see. Uh, anyways, uh, thank you guys. We'll see you guys next time. Uh, again, remember to like and subscribe all the videos and enjoy. Uh, and remember, uh, Teferi is is bad and so is Narset. And uh, don't play those cards, please. Uh, it makes people like me sad. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I love, I do like, I do like those cards. It's just seeing them everywhere is kind of rough right now. So uh, anyways, take it easy. Love you guys. Have a good night. Good week. Something. I don't know. Have a something. Have a good something, everybody. Later.